Hi, and welcome back to Real Estate Made Simple. My name is Coach Rick. I'm the owner of 3L Coaching and the Bosley team. And we are here on episode three, diving into power session one of 3612.3. If you missed the first two episodes, go ahead and just look back a few wherever you're listening or watching this and so you can get that introduction. And here we now are on episode three. And we're going to talk to you today about the 3612.3 challenge, what it actually means to you. We're going to talk about how you can avoid the roller coaster of productivity. We're going to talk about your mindset and if you're wired for leads. And finally, implementation and accountability. Thanks for watching. This will be a great episode. So welcome back. Here we are on the 36123 challenge. And we want to ask yourself, you know, why 36123? I know we're talking to the masses and this is written for realtors, but I want you to take this in perspective of whatever you do. Uh, if you're a boat mechanic, then what's the the transactions you need to have the the amount of, of income you desire to really make an impact? So for realtors, we use the number 36 transactions, three a month, and we can do it by spending three hours. So the question is, what else could you do in your business for three hours a day that would have a greater return than getting 36 transactions? I can't think of anything. Yeah, why is it so difficult that we maintain that discipline, that focus to do it? If nothing else will trump the ROI for it, then why do we keep allowing distractions? So that's going to be the reality of it. And, and the goal is going to be 36 transactions, and here's why. We don't want to settle for average. The average realtor does less than five transactions. Well, frankly, I think it's because the, the, the entry, the barrier of entry to get your real estate license, specifically here in Florida, is so low that anyone can get the real estate license and not at all take it seriously. So the average agent does five, and that's just taking the total transactions divided by the total amount of agents. Now, at the time we're recording this, the beginning of 2023, we're amongst a shift, right? We've seen an ultimate slowdown. We've seen interest rates rise, and we're expecting a fallout of licensed realtors. In fact, just in December last month, excuse me, all of last year, 22,000 new agents became licensed with the National Association of Realtors. 22,000 new licenses in 2022. Last month, 17,000 dropped. Almost one month of, of growth was accounted for in the drop. So as real estate gets harder, all of a sudden the, the bar gets risen. So we're not gonna settle for average because I don't believe you're listening or watching to this to be average. And the only way to not do it average is to concisely decide not to be average. <clears throat> so here's the goal. When we can do 36 closed transactions, you're gonna make money, you're gonna be profitable. You're gonna have a solid foundation that's gonna take you and build your career year after year. Ultimately, you can help families buy and sell one of the largest assets of their lifetime. You know what activities you need to work on and what you do well so you can focus with that. You're gonna be able to strengthen that skill set and those habits. You're gonna gain respect and recognition throughout the community and ultimately create enough of a business and a profit to hire an executive assistant and change some lives internally as well. So 36 transactions really sets you up for success. What does it mean for your GCI? Well, take your average price point or your average transaction or your average commission, multiply it by 36. That's your gross commission income. Now, yes, there's operating expenses and there's broker splits and fees and taxes. And ultimately, that's a different conversation. But this should be enough money that sets you up to have that strong foundation and that strong career. So why do we choose 12 months? Well, growing a strong, successful business takes a little bit of time. You see, it's almost like popping a bag of popcorn. I heard this analogy when I was brand new into real estate from a colleague. And popping a bag of popcorn, we put in the microwave for two minutes. The first 90 seconds, we're just watching. We're just, if you're like my five-year-old right now, you put your, your mind right up to it. I hope you don't have radiation coming out, man, because he watched that popcorn. In the first 90 seconds, he hear nothing. And in the final 30 seconds, pop, 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 And all of a sudden, you have your full bag of popcorn. What would happen to that bag of popcorn if it didn't have consistent applied heat over and over again. Could we go 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off? I don't, I don't think so. I don't know so. It's not going to happen because you lose that consistency. So we want to say 12 months over time, and that's how we're going to get that, which also means don't just get discouraged if it doesn't happen right off the bat. When you start something new, you're going to fall. I mentioned I've got a five-year-old. I got a fact of four, six, and seven. I have anything but a five-year-old. A four, six, and seven-year-old right now, they're learning to ride some bikes. 
And guess what? They're not very good at it right now, right? They are falling. They are stumbling. They're a little bit nervous. You get back on the bike. You keep going. So if you fumble, don't just quit. Get back on it. Learn from it and grow from it. I want to think about when you start something new uh, in anything, riding a bike or starting a lead generator, building this business. Usually when we come in, we have this uninformed optimism. And I'm quoting some references from the 12-week year, another fantastic book. Some uninformed optimism that we're just going, I'm going to get real estate and it's going to be so great. I can make my own schedule and have unlimited income. And everything sounds fantastic. And all of a sudden, we realize that we have to do lead generation for three hours a day. No one ever told me that part. And I go from uninformed optimism to an informed pessimism outlook. Now, unfortunately, in my 12 years leading and coaching realtors, I see many people stop there. And they see the difficulty there. and They choose not to move forward. And here's, I'm going to ask you if you're going to not settle for being average. I'm going to ask you if you're willing to persevere beyond that. And by persevering, you're just going to get to work. And you're going to put in the effort to put forth to get that transactions done. And you move from the informed pessimist to all of a sudden, you get your first lead and your first appointment, and your first listing, and your first buyer under contract, and you become an informed optimist. And then after that, success and fulfillment, then we get to start over with some new uncharted territories. Now, here's the the discouragement I want you to be aware of. Real estate uh, has what's called, or anything in this matter, geometric progression. It doesn't happen sequentially. It doesn't happen that you're going to do 36 there are 12, yeah, 36 transactions. That doesn't mean you're going to do three every month from the beginning. No, no. You might go zero, 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 one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six. And all of a sudden, momentum is building. And I want you to be aware right now that when you're starting something new, it takes time to build up that momentum. In that point that you're putting in all of the work but not seeing all of the results, you're in what's called the valley of despair. You're questioning, is it worth it? Are you good enough? Is it going to happen? And I want to share with you, if you can keep applying and keep doing the right things every day, then it is and you are. You just have to break through that valley of despair to see the other side because it's, it's, it's almost like golf, right? You can have the worst day of golf, but then that one shot in the 18th fairway that you just hit it pure and you put it within a couple inches of the cup, you're like, yes, that's what I'm talking about. I love this game. So keep going out there. We need some time to pop the popcorn. We need to wait for that pure golf shot. And we need to allow you to build up your habit and your skill set to see the fruits of your labor. So what I ask yourself is, is where are you at today? Where's your lifestyle today? Where's your mindset today? Where do you want to be a year from now? And how can we implement some structure into our business and into our schedule and into our lives so that we can create these good habits? When we think about the habit of three hours a day, it is going to start with you having other aspects of your life taken care of. Your health, your energy, your diets, your relationships, the support. Time block it and go have a great day before noon. It's almost impossible to time block real estate eight hours a day. It's, it's almost impossible. We are constantly being hijacked and constantly being interrupted. Go time block and create that perfect morning. That's going to be the successful habit you're looking for. Let's create the great day that you're going to become greater and greater and make it more normal and normal. Have you ever been to the gym and you go to the gym so often it feels weird if you don't? You've created that habit. Maybe you drink coffee. Maybe if you don't have coffee, you're like, oh, give me my coffee. I need some coffee. You probably don't need some coffee. You just want it. And your mind is chemically craving it. And therefore, you feel groggy. You can kick it, right? So you're going to adopt a new attitude. This is I'm a lead generator before anything else. It's their first job. And it's the first job that's going to keep you going. So here's some rules. Do your best to time block those three hours before 12 o'clock. No skipping it. If you must erase it, you must replace it. When you must erase it, it's because something more important has taken it over and you did everything you could to try to protect that time, which means you're saying no to appointments, saying no to closings, saying no to doctor's appointments. Let's do all that stuff in the afternoon so you can take care of your most important rocks in the morning. And don't allow any interruptions, right? Of course, we're not going to let our family, you know, any real emergencies go unheard, but don't let the little distractions stop you. We're going to do this every day, and and it doesn't mean you don't get a vacation. What I'm going to ask you to do is 
time block your focus days. If we have 30 days in a month and you take off every weekend, well, there's eight to 10 days right off the bat that you're off work. Okay, so that leaves 21 days of Monday through Friday. And of that, you know that you like to play golf every Friday afternoon. It's just who you are and what you do. So you're going to have a flex day every Friday. That means you've got Monday through Thursday, four to five days or weeks a month of focus days. You might have 17 days of focus days. We've got to get enough done in 17 days. So don't look at your month and think you have 30 days because you're not creating that life balance that you deserve and need. So we're going to create that. As you're going through this, don't tie the effort to the outcome. We can have predictable effort. The effort's the only thing that doesn't really take any skill set. Just show up and put in the work. Predictable elf effort will get you predictable outcomes. If we can track it over time, we'll be able to see what that metric is. And that's in the amount of leads or pipeline or nurtures or appointments or however you quantify that. Ultimately, those pipelines will lead you to close business and that leads you to income. So tie the effort to the outcome, not to the enjoyment. Now we think about multitasking. You know, I've interviewed a lot of people and they'll tell me that uh, multitasking is a strength and, and we are in a world that we need to multitask, aren't we? And some people think it is a strength and, and frankly, it's necessary at times that we can multitask. But I'll share with you, you're never at your best if you choose to multitask. I mean, literally, you're, you're taking your attention, dividing it to two things or three things or four things. And if it was at your best, you wouldn't be multitasking. If you're doing surgery, open heart surgery or brain surgery, you're probably not going to be multitasking. You're not going to be watching the football game over your shoulder. So multitasking might be essential for some things that are not very important. Brain surgery and lead generation, it is important. So do your best to be focused on the task at hand and don't celebrate the fact that you're multitasking while you're doing your most important thing because all you're doing is distracting yourself from the best results you could get. I want you to focus more on priority tasking and take care of those first things first without letting multitasking become that distraction. So we think about intensity. You have intensity and frequency, right? Intensity is, is how focused are we? And we think about our customers. If, if I have somebody who tells me, I want to sell my house in the next 48 hours, I need to, it's got to be gone. Man, I'm going to be intense. I'm going to be at their doorstep. I'm going to be doing comps. I'm going to be doing everything they need. I'm going to give them all hands on deck intensity. If I have the same conversation with someone that says, yep, when my son graduates from high school and he moves out and it's June, I want to sell my house. I don't have to be as intense. I don't have to be as frequent. So we have to think about our frequency. We have to think about our intensity. Intensity is how much you are honed in on it. You've got to figure out what is your intensity. You're going to know this. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. I don't know your skill sets. I don't know your strengths. I don't know your weaknesses or your challenges. You've got to figure out the level of your intensity you need to hit your three hours to ultimately hit all those key metrics you need to hit your 36. Now, three hours, we hear from a lot of people like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of calls. Hey, you're right. If that's all we ever did, three hours every day was make calls. But here's really the, the anatomy of those three hours. Maybe 30 minutes is preparation. You're going to print out your call list, do a little bit of research, prepare some content. You might do two hours of call time. And in those two hours, you should be able to make 12 to 20 real estate conversations or prospecting or customer conversations. In the final 30 minutes is maintenance, that you write your handwritten notes, you do your follow-up, you put them in your CRM, you take your notes, you add some tasks. What we find is that most people, if they were to legion for a block, they spend way too much time preparing and way too much time maintaining and not enough time actually doing the activity. But make sure you do time block for time to prepare and to, to maintain for it. So that's your three hours, and they can be broken up into different aspects. So there's the challenge. Let's talk about the productivity roller coaster. And we mentioned this on the very first episode of this series here. And that's when you're so focused on lead generation, all of a sudden it works, and you're getting business, and you're getting clients, and everything is fantastic. And you get so busy handling your customers that you, that you earned last month that you stop with your three hour habit. And you do so and you justify it in your head. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. I had to do this walkthrough and I had this and this and this. So I didn't do my legion at all yesterday or last week. Then all of a sudden you look ahead a month or 60 days down the road and all of a sudden you have no customers that are closing. Why? Because you didn't put in the work two months ago. And there you are on the real estate 
roller coaster. So how do we avoid this roller coaster? It's simple. Be disciplined with your most important activity. As your business goes up, how do we maintain discipline? When I teach classes on how and when to hire leverage or an assistant or a showing assistant for your business, there's not a magic number because everyone's created and built differently. And what I share with them is when you are find that you're caught between providing amazing customer service for your, your clients and customers and doing your core habit of lead generation and prospecting. And we don't have enough time for, to fulfill both. You get help. And you get help with the customer service aspect so you can keep doing the stuff that got you there. It's like the gasoline. I don't care what else is, is knocking in your car. If you don't have gas in it, you're eventually going to run out and it doesn't matter. So keep focused on that activity. And that's how we can keep building and growing into it. A couple of quotes that we've got some from some wise people within the Keller Williams system. Gary Keller, do you have enough leads that if you close them properly, you'll be reaching your goal? If the answer is no, then you know you don't have enough leads. Keep going. Bruce Hardy got back to the basics of his lead generation every day, and all of a sudden, his pipeline's full, pipeline full. That goes with your confidence. That goes with your anxiety gets lowered. Everything becomes easier when you can see that pipeline. The difference between seeing lead generation as a single set of activities or events versus seeing it as a discipline and a mindset. Lead generation isn't an event. It's just a thing we do. It's a mindset that this is what you will do to be a successful realtor. And when the market shifts like it's given us here recently, I would say in Orlando, but throughout the country, at the end of 2022 and early 2023, the market shifted pretty quick. But frankly, for most of us, any market shift should have little to no impact. If anything, it's going to weed out some of the, the realtors who were taking advantage of an easier market. So the opportunity for market share grows. And if you can apply that discipline and that effort in, you're going to be able to come out smelling like roses on the other side. So now I want to ask you, are you wired to win? Are you wired for leads? John Maxwell says how people see failure and deal with it is whether they possess the ability to look beyond it and keep achieving. And it impacts every aspect of their life. He has a book called Sometimes You Win and Sometimes You Learn. Being wired to win means putting failure in perspective and adopting that mindset of achievement and success. That's being wired to win. Being wired for leads, it says every day I'm gonna go out and get a lead. In the book Shift, they talk about doing the three hours of lead generation, yet they also put two more metrics against it. You'll do three hours of lead generation and have 20 conversations and book one appointment. I don't know if, how about you, but if you've got kids and your kids get one A and two Fs, is that okay? I don't think so. We're looking for A's or A's and B's, maybe for some of you guys, C's, right? Or to each their own. Yet I want to ask you guys, when you're doing your three hours, are you also measuring your conversations? Are you wired for leads? Are you wired to have realistic conversations to ultimately add somebody to your pipeline every day and ultimately book some appointments and get some clients? So be wired for leads. No means not yet. We know that five no's, it's going to, it's going to take five no's before you get to that yes be resilient, right? Read the room. Don't be obnoxious. Don't be annoying. Add value. Come from contribution. Actually understand their question and their need. Be a resource. Stay in curiosity and have great follow-up. Being wired for leads, a millionaire real estate agent tells us that we're in two businesses. We're in the lead generation business and then the real estate business. If you come in and you're a realtor and you don't have any clients, you're not a realtor. You're unemployed. You hung your license with a broker, but you don't have a customers. If you don't have customers, you don't have a job because you have no income coming in. So I want you to think about that. You have two, two jobs and the mindset of a realtor needs to be, I need to constantly be going on job interviews and applying for jobs because if my average client to close is, call it 100 days, then every 100 days, it's almost like I'm a temp agency. I need to keep getting that next one. I need to get 36 temp jobs and I got to constantly be prospecting and looking for that that next job. The limiting belief around lead generation and our mindset are rewired for leads is lead generation equals prospecting. Prospecting is cold calling. Cold calling is rejection. That sounds awful. That's not what I signed up for. That's a limiting belief and that will hold you back. Here's the unlimited belief. Lead generation is business relationship building and that leads to great opportunity and ultimately financial op or independence. So the four goals that we have in religion every morning is to get an appointment, 
get a referral, add someone to our nurture or pipeline for future business, or just increase your database with people that give you permission to follow up. And you can have success every day. Where do you find leads? Leads are everywhere. Almost everyone out there owns or buys or rents or sells a home. Over 70% of people would love to be a real estate investor if they just knew how or had the means. So I'm curious, do you know which part of the people in your database would love to be an investor? And are they seeing you as a resource or a vehicle to their financial wealth through real estate? See, leads are everywhere. I've challenged some of our agents in our office, especially the ones who didn't close anything in the last six or 12 months, that they could sit in the side of the road of the cardboard box. And it said, I don't want money or food. I want to talk to you about real estate. And if they sat there every day, maybe three hours a day, they would have more conversations that ultimately lead to more clients and more customers. Now, of course, I'm being facetious, but am I really? Because it's a success story of a retired gentleman who lived in the beach town. And every day in the morning, he sat down, he read his book and watched the sunrise until it got too hot around 9 or 10 o'clock and he read his book. And next to him, he put a sign in the sand that says, I am your beachfront realtor do you have any questions? And he just put his little billboard out and read his book. Now, he wasn't focused on taking over the world and being number one market share. I don't know what his financial position was, but the van closed deals by showing up every day. Leads are everywhere. You just have to have the conversations and go find them. <clears throat> so now we've adopted this mindset. We've adopted the challenge. We, we understand the importance of it. Now I'm going to ask you about training, implementation, and accountability. This series of what we're going to go through is going to move through the next session. The next session that we're going to talk about is validity and positioning. So now that you're committed to doing the three hours, and you're committed to that habit and to that discipline, we're going to talk about what makes you special, what makes you unique, what is your unique selling proposition or your unique value proposition that we can take and turn into momentum to allow you to differentiate yourself. We're going to move that into validity and positioning, some, some key systems and mindset around prospecting, marketing, and leveraging your powerful database. Then we move on to working with your METs, open houses, farming, FISBOs, expires, agent-to-agent, -agent, online third-party referrals, social media, converting leads, and how we can nurture with that pipeline system, ultimately to living your best life. I trust you're excited about the content, and if you're still here, do me a favor. Like, subscribe, or comment. Make sure you ring the bell so you can be notified every time a new one is dropped so you don't miss any episodes. And I look forward to taking this journey with you. If you have any questions, please reach out. My information is in the comment below. You can call me, text me, or email me so I can be a resource for you. I'm Rick Bosley with 3L Coaching and the Bosley team, making real estate simple. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye.